I often think of Zimbabwe uh, as, a, as a structural crisis. This is not something that's happened in a short period of time. And, and I think one of the errors we all make is that somehow something magical will come and turn it significantly. And, that, and I definitely agree as a starting point with what you're saying about constitutionalism. Um, if we look at South Africa, you know, a few years ago, uh, a president was stepped aside. We've had actually two presidents that have been removed from power in this country through, let's call them, either the party or public opinion or both in some process. And so South Africa also struggles with this notion of constitutionalism. Do we really take democracy and human rights and, and accountability to be a fundamental of, of our society? And that's why I agree with Peter that primarily the Zimbabwean story rests with Zimbabweans. But when I think about what it is like as an individual to con be confronted by a state that knows few boundaries, apart from breaking the rules, that is prepared to shoot its own citizens and intimidate them and oppress them to this level, it takes extraordinary courage to live through it, but also to be active in it. And so, yes, of course, it does start within Zimbabwe, but it is a very, very tough road to hoe. Because when, when authoritarian leaders look at power with a sophisticated understanding of the nature of power, the brutal nature of power, for citizens to resist that is calling for an incredibly difficult thing to be done. It's been done, of course, many times. And, and as I look back in the last 30 years, there have been these moments where you felt the people of Zimbabwe are saying enough is enough. But somehow the state has the resources, mainly through the military, the CIO, the police, uh, to impose its will. And that's a very heavy price to pay. The second thing I'd like to talk about just briefly is to say Zimbabwe is a very strategic player uh, in the region. And it's in the interests of Botswana or all the neighboring countries, including South Africa, that Zimbabwe does stabilize because its, its latent potential remains phenomenal. Its people are amazing. South Africa has had the benefits of the crisis of Zimbabwe. There are so many Zimbabweans in this country who add huge value to South Africa because they are Zimbabweans. Their values, their education, the hardship they've gone through is a net plus to South Africa. It should never be like that. I'm not sure then, if I look at the region, what one can say beyond a longer-term view that it's in all the region's interest, all the countries, SADC especially, for Zimbabwe not only to stabilize, but to, to, to be able to develop its human and natural resource potential. And yet it consistently fails to do this. I said when we were meeting that all my life, all my adult life, Zimbabweans have said to me it can't get worse. But it does, consistently. And I wish this was a laughing matter. For your average 10-year-old or 20-year-old in Zimbabwe, this is a human tragedy. It, 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 we can't describe it any other way. So I can see where in the region, in terms of trade and investment, in agriculture, in mining, in manufacturing, I often say the toughest chief executives I know are Zimbabwean chief executives who've gone through extraordinary times in trying to hold a business together. That potential should be realized. But I think it does start not only with the voice of Zimbabweans who are not in Zimbabwe, the diaspora, but it does start in Zimbabwe. And I'm not an expert enough to know what starts that process. What I will say is that it, the miracle, the kind of idea that some big thing is going to happen is really not where we should start. We should start with what is actually practical and meaningful. Let me comment about South Africa's diplomacy. I think it's been a failure of diplomacy. I can't comment on the Mutlante uh, uh, investigation as, as well as you can. But it seems that this is a diplomatic failure. And, and I, I'm, I'm sorry we don't have someone on the panel from the Department of, from Durka, because I'm not sure what the thinking is about how South Africa sees the risk of the further decline, significant decline of Zimbabwe, as opposed to the upside of having a stable, prosperous partner who's our neighbor. <coughs> but that's a gross miscalculation. Bar Barbara Tushman said, folly is when you miscalculate your own interests with the facts. 
We know the facts of how capable Zimbabweans are, what institutions are still there that can be resuscitated, and what infrastructure is there. And so I, I don't get it. I don't get why this country, South Africa, is not far more assertive behind the scenes, in public. Let me share one last thought. In the elections, I, I was uh, some years ago now, I don't remember which election it was, I was talking to the deputy CEO, the CEO of the SABC, who described how they had managed to get the, the sole rights to cover the election and then distribute them around the world. And he explained to me how they'd gone up with money and handed this over at the airport to officials. In this country, there's a very low level of knowledge about Zimbabwe. And our own state and other media are not covering Zimbabwe in proportion to both its crisis and its potential. So South Africans, I think, are deeply uninformed that here's a democratic state that has collapsed and it's visible, a visible collapse. And we need as South Africans to pick this up and make sure that business in this country takes up this voice, as should Labour and as should, should the ANC, and say this is not in anyone's interest and we need to intervene. I'm not a diplomatic expert, but there are, there are definitely tools and means available. One of them is public opinion in this country to say this is totally unacceptable and it's a human rights, as you correctly describe, abuse. So we need to be far more assertive, regionally in SADC, in the AU, but also just as a country of South Africans who care deeply about the fate of an extraordinary people.